Now let's talk about iodine, because I'm proposing that that is also a critical mineral for protecting breasts. Now let's see why. This is a statement that's made from the archives, because doctors used to use potassium iodide to treat virtually everything. Because guess what? It seemed to work for virtually everything. So what they said was, if ye don't know where, what, and why, prescribe ye then K and I. That's what they used to say. If you don't know what's causing the disease, and you don't know where it's coming from, or why it's there, just prescribe potassium iodide. It'll do the job. But you know, since the advent of thyroid hormones particularly, the notion that we can use potassium iodide or use iodine and wield it therapeutically or preventatively has, has gone out the window. In fact, sometimes when you talk about iodine in a medical forum, it's like someone suddenly started talking about leprosy. That's how much iodine has become almost a phobia, something you have to avoid. But doctors used to use it routinely. Now, somewhere we went off track. Iodine, women with goiters, a visible non-cancerous enlargement of the thyroid, owing to iodine deficiency, have three times greater risk or incidence of breast cancer. A high intake of iodine is associated with a low incidence of breast cancer and a low intake, of, uh, a low intake with a high incidence of breast cancer. Every cell in the body needs and requires iodine to function normally. David Brownstein has written a lot on iodine. He uses it therapeutically to treat his patients with breast cancer as well. I won't dwell on that. Iodine deficiency strongly implicated in cancers of organs normally having a high iodine presence. For example, thyroid, breast, ov ovary, prostate, stomach, pancreas, colon, lung, uh, and lung. So not just breast. Sites of rapid apoptosis, or programmed cell death in the body, are also sites with high iodine levels, incidentally. Uh, uh, Bernard Eskin published over 80 papers over a 30-year period showing that iodine deficiency was linked with an increased risk of both breast and thyroid cancer. Not me saying it. And then, of course, if you look cross-culturally, Japanese women, the average iodine intake is about 13.8 milligrams a day. And they have one of the lowest incidences of breast cancer on the planet. Uh, in addition, Japan has one of the lowest incidences of iodine deficiency, goiter, uh, and hypothyroidism. So that matches. Iceland also, they have a high iodine intake, and they also have low rates of goiter and low rates of breast cancer. So there's an association. Two countries with the low with low iodine intake, Thailand and Mexico, have high rates of breast cancer. So there is something about iodine which is protective of breasts, ladies, in a similar way to vitamin D. How many of you, is this the first time that you've heard that? Oh, so, you, so I'm preaching to the converted then. All right, good. Well, it's, it's useful revision then. So what are some of the ways that iodine works? Look at some of the actions that iodine has. First of all, it, it, it encourages programmed cell death. In other words, apoptosis in breast cancer cells, that's been demonstrated. So it turns off breast cancer cells. It detoxifies the body from heavy metals, lead and mercury, and also detoxifies the body from xenoestrogens, pesticides, herbicides, industrial chemicals. And I showed you earlier, ladies, one of the things that detoxifies estrogens is iodine. 10 times more potent than ascorbic acid or vitamin C as an antioxidant. I bet you didn't know that. It affects 43 genes involved with cell cycle, growth, proliferation, and differentiation. And some of those are the estrogen regulation genes. So it's very involved with that. Iodine is also a great alkalizing agent, and it can elevate pH. That might also be a useful uh, uh, mechanism of action. 